that could be a little dangerous. You know, they took off Lou Dobbs, so I'm gonna, I gotta watch what I say. <laughs> and uh, anyway, he's executive order after executive order. I hate to say that that's totalitarianism. Do you know what I mean? He's done more in the first hundred days. But significantly, you've got to follow the bouncing banker. And when Yellen took over the Treasury and she came from the Fed, you have to look at what's happening with Draghi in Italy, I think, and Mark Carney out of Bank of England. So follow the bouncing bankers. And then you have an idea of what's really going on in the world. And many of the bouncing bankers like Carney and Draghi came from Goldman Sachs, as you know. So, I mean, <laughs> uh, just follow them. And, and that's why what, uh, what's her name, Janet Yellen signifies is they can't get money into the economy fast enough by the old system. So they have to go directly to helicopter money. And that's why they need to reopen up the Fed bylaws <clears throat> and change the rules. And then they can print money directly and give it to the customer. Because right now the drawback is, if I want money from the current system, I have to have good financial credit. And as you know, this COVID has shut down. I mean, people have been wiped out. They can't get loans. If they can't get loans, you can't get money to them. So Yellen going to the Treasury from the Fed means they'll get together now and go to the Weimar Republic or Zimbabwe, you know, the, the worst case scenarios, and just print money directly to the customer, UBI MMT. Former Fed Chair Janet Yellen, now Treasury Secretary Draghi, former head of the ECB, now uh, you know slated to become Italy's next PM. It's like they're infiltrating the government now. Well, there's a great book I read when I was younger and more stupid. This guy brings it up to date today, which is Rex. And just follow the bouncing bankers and you can see what's happening. It's war, financial warfare. And it's against the poor and middle class, against the proletariat. So that's, what, that's what's happening. And that's why we're gonna have this huge gap. The gap's only gonna get wider, wider which leads to social unrest. And that's what I'm afraid of. That's why I speak and I say what I say. Robert, uh, do you think it will be more helicopter money than the Ben Bernanke days? It has to be. You know, that's why every time I'm on your show, I don't know what the food fight is about, you know, Peter Schiff saying gold and Max Tyler saying it's Bitcoin. I said, you guys, why are you fighting amongst each other? Who cares? Why, you know, as, as the, what's his name, Yogi Barra says, when you come to the fork in a road, take it. So you have gold, silver, or Bitcoin, just buy them. Who cares? Because the real enemy is uh, this book here, The Grunge of Giants by Fuller, The Bouncing Bankers Control the World. Robert, I was uh, happy to get you on the show so we could talk uh, about Bitcoin, gold, and silver. You know, it's three of our favorite topics here at Sansbury Investor. Um, Tesla, you know, following in the footsteps of Michael Saylor, uh, buying 1.5 billion in Bitcoin. That news blew me away. I wasn't surprised. Uh, you know, Elon Musk had been alluding and 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 you know hinting uh, to to a Bitcoin buy on his Twitter. Um, what do you make of this? Do you think this will cause a fear of missing out for more CEOs, and this is just going to cause a domino effect here? Yes, it's it's coming. There's uh, there's more and more the rumoring, all this rumor, but there's going to have more and more CEOs and see CFOs uh, really not to ship their treasury out of the dollar. You know, because it is a currency war. And you've got to get out of something they're printing and get into something that's going to retain value. And I think for many people, that is Bitcoin or Ethereum and things like this. So it's going crypto. And that's why Draghi and all these guys, the, the European Central Union, are talking about cryptocurrency. And, you know, I started buying silver when I was 17 years old in 1964. When I saw that little copper tinge around my dime, I'm going, hey, you know, to say in Mexico, que pasa? <laughs> what are they doing to our money? And that's Gresham's law. And that was what brought down the Roman Empire in Zimbabwe and Venezuela and the Weimar Republic. Not, no fiat currency has ever survived. So in 1964, I'm a 17 year old kid, I'm, start, 
I started collecting real silver coins. And then in 72, I'm a, a pilot in Vietnam. I went behind enemy lines to um, find out I wanted to buy gold because I couldn't buy gold in America. And this little Vietnamese woman, the little red chief, you know, I tried to negotiate her down from 50 bucks to spot with 50 bucks that were also 35 to 50. I'm trying to negotiate her down to me a better deal for like maybe 42 bucks. And what an idiot. <laughs> and she just, this little tiny woman just smiles at me and says, spot. That's the only English word she knew, spot. And I said, what the hell, spot? And then I really was surprised how gold and silver, what I call God's money, all over the world. You know, gold and silver have been here since the earth was born. And so that's when I became kind of a gold bug and a silver bug. And I've taken two companies public, uh, a, gold mining, a gold mining company in China, which <laughs> the Chinese duck, and uh, a silver mining company in Argentina. So I'm a, I'm a hardcore, hard money, non-paper, so let's let's talk about the silver market because you know i've been covering this for market for over 10 years robert and i don't think i've ever seen so much excitement surrounding uh silver so i know you were a supporter of what was happening on reddit you're always cheering for the little guys and if they could take down hedge funds fantastic uh but you know what, what do you make of what was happening and all this attention on silver and do you think it will last well the problem with was a game stop it's a fake yep. It's fake, hundred percent fake. That's not that. It's not worth anything. And so that's why they can play a silly little game of shorts and all that stuff. But the trouble with silver, it's a real asset. You know, it's an industrial metal first. And the biggest people that use it are some of the biggest corporations in the world, like Sony, Apple, Toshiba, any battery company. And now with uh, <clears throat> you know the ESG in fact environmental social governance, which Carney took over from the Bank of England. You know what I mean? He's taken over that for uh, a, a, a company called Brookfield in Canada. Everybody's shifting green. So silver is a green metal. And so I was really happy when Reddit at least stirred the water up, but they were messing with real companies, Ushiba, Apple, Tesla, Sony, Apple, you know, they're messing with the end user. And the thing I know since I started the gold mine, it's 100% manipulated. They keep the price low just so it doesn't blow their operating costs out of the water. 